right. Well, we're talking about metamodernism, and uh, it is a worldview, as I said. Now, the word meta, uh, I believe, comes from the Latin metaxis. And you probably know of the famous uh, speaker, Eric Metaxas. And uh, that name uh, means simply uh, middle. And so this worldview has been given this name meta because we are kind of in between, if you will. It's a mixture. It's a worldview that mixes modernism with postmodernism and the whole technology component. So that's where the name comes from, meta-modernism. So um, I want to open up with a scripture first to, to set this up so you understand the implications of this worldview. Genesis 11 says, Now the entire earth had the same language and the same vocabulary. When they traveled eastward, they found a plain, a valley plain, in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and bake them until they're hard. So they used bricks for stone and tar for mortar. And they said, come, let's build ourselves a city with a tower whose top reaches into heaven. So let's make a name for ourselves or else we will be scattered over the whole face of the whole land. Then Adonai came down to see the city and the tower and the sons of man had built. And Adonai said, look, the people are all one and all of them together have the same language. So this is what they have begun to do now. Nothing they plan to do will be impossible. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand each other's language. So Adonai scattered them from there over the whole face of the entire land, and they stopped, behind, stopped building the city. And so this is why it is called Babel to this day, because Adonai confused the languages of the entire world there. And from there, Adonai scattered them over the face of the entire world. Okay. So I set this up because I want you to understand where the where human history is going, and this is the next stage, if you will, in accomplishing the same concept of what I just shared with you from Genesis 11. Now, there's two takeaways from this um, passage. Number one is the pride and the arrogance that goes along with it, and the, that is it says in their scripture, let's make a name for ourselves that indicates pride. And the second point that we need to keep in mind is that God himself said nothing they plan uh, will be impossible. So had God not confused the languages, uh, we would have been able to do this. And that's that's interesting concept, a biblical concept. Now, for a time span on the Hebrew uh, calendar, we have to understand this happened, the Tower of Babel incident happened around the year 1996 from creation in the Hebrew calendar, okay? So I'm going to first in, uh, introduce how we got to metamodernism by just saying that uh, the Age of Enlightenment uh, brought about what we know as modernism, and in which secular discoveries of knowledge and science exploded with rapid new developments in medicine, technology, and science. And so we see some philosophers here, David Hume, Vol Vol with Descartes, John Locke, Immanuel Kant, etc. And so this age set us up for the industrial age, which is really what you see here is the the modernistic age, the age of modernism. And with this new knowledge, man continued to play God. And he found new understandings and power that he was able to achieve. And he quickly learned that questioning traditionally held beliefs and cultural standards and theological principles became very appealing and fashionable. And it was during this age that we see that um, in modernism that Darwinism uh, was was uh, really a hot topic. It was the new and greatest thing. And so people adopted that worldview and it further secularized society. Now, going in, Darwinism contributed to the next age, which we call postmodernism, where this is a worldview that does not recognize objective truth. And so all truth is relative. Your truth is may not be the same as my truth. Of course, this uh, picture that you see in front of you says, all truth is relative except this statement. And, and that's a little commentary on the absurdity of postmodernism 
that uh, everyone has to accept everyone else's view unless you hold to the fact that there is objective truth and therefore your worldview doesn't count. And so it's, it's, um, it's a little uh, uh, self-defeating. And then um, this is a way to kind of um, summarize how we've gone from one stage to the other. In the pre-modern age, uh, we all said, because God put it there and that's the way it's always been. And then the modern age came along and it says onwards and upwards in inevitable progress. We started making progress and then we get to postmodern and we just checked our brains out at the door. And that's, uh, that was the age we were in. And now uh, we have entered into, since the mid 20th century, we've entered into what we call metamodernism. And as we enter this brave new world of metamodernism, the absurdity of the postmodern leftist worldview and its circular values are becoming mixed together with new technologies such as AI, artificial intelligence, and the metaverse. It will go beyond influencing our culture to dominating the lives of each member of society beyond the likeness of what we see today with your iPhone um, or the internet itself. And I want to remind you, world uh, metamodernism is a worldview. It's a way of thinking. Um, it's an ideology. And our source, one of my sources says, metamodern philosophy enters the scene only once the internet and social media have distribution of industrial goods. And that's what we see going on right now. You can essentially buy everything you need off the internet. And so it's a, it's a worldview faith in progress postmodern when you what you get then is a view of reality in which people are on a long complex developmental journey towards greater complexity and existential depth the metamodern philosophy is a whole world of ideas and suppositions that are counterintuitive to modern and postmodern people alike but since both the modern and the postmodern philosophies are increasingly outdated these metamodern ideas are set to develop, take hold, and spread. One day, they may become as dominant as modern philosophy is today. And so what you see on your screen here is just a uh, three different panels uh, of these worldviews to show you uh, the differences. In, in, in the modern ideas, 100 years ago, there was faith in science. And then in the postmodern ideas, critical questioning of all knowledge and science became popular. Well, now in the metamodern idea, one of the biggest values is how can we reap the best of the previous two worldviews? So again, it's a meta, it's in the middle, it's taking the best of those two worldviews according to what they think is the best and mixing it. So now I wanna quickly introduce you to the technology called the metaverse, not to be confused with metamodernism. Uh, the metaverse is, is the technology. It is the vehicle that helps this worldview uh, continue to exist. And since it's a uh, metamodernism, it's a worldview, we can think of this as simply a technology. Now, if you've heard the term web 1.0 and web 2.0, this refers to the history of the World Wide Web as it evolved through various technologies and formats. Web 1.0 refers to roughly the period from 1991 to 2004, where most sites consisted of static pages and the vast majority of users were consumers, not producers of content. Web 2.0 is based around the idea of the web as a platform, and it centers on the user-created content uploaded to forums, social media, networking services, blogs, and wikis, and other services. So Web 2.0 is generally considered to have begun around 2004, and it continues to the current day. Now, I'm going to share with you uh, this uh, very important video because it's an introduction. You might recognize this is uh, Zuckerberg, who uh, is the CEO of Facebook, and this will put things into perspective. It is time for us to adopt a new company brand to encompass everything that we do. To reflect who we are and what we hope to build, I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. 
Our mission remains the same. It's still about bringing people together. Our apps and their brands, they're not changing either. And we are still the company that designs technology. So uh, what's important to understand about that is Zuckerberg is, is saying tough. there that he changed the name of Facebook as a company. Uh, the product, one of their products is now Facebook, but they changed their name to Meta. And that is a significant development that everyone should take notice of is the trajectory uh, that this worldview is going and the technology that drives it. Now, what you're gonna see here is part of Zuckerberg's presentation. He, you're not gonna hear it, you're gonna hear me talk, but he's turning into the metaverse here. He's becoming what is called an avatar. And you enter into a realistic looking room and you can walk around and this is the metaverse, what you're seeing right there in this video. You can actually walk in, you can be anywhere you want in the world at any time. You will have hologram access. You'll be able to talk to other people through holograms and you can design and create your own avatar. You can wear whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Uh, your avatar literally can do and be anywhere and you will meet other avatars. And these are other people who are joining in the metaverse as well. And so you can see there's a person hovering there, you can fly, you can do all kinds of things in the metaverse. So one of the things too that the metaverse is changing is the way we do business. And so today when we say work at home, we have keyboards and screens and we have cameras. Well in the future with this metaverse, you don't need any of that. You don't need a keyboard, you don't need um, a mouse, you will not even need necessarily a screen. You will put something on your eyes and hold things in your hand and you will enter into this world. It's as if you are entering into your screen and going yourself into the computer. Now, my teaching on this is how can we use apologetics to uh, you know, reach people that are in this world, that are living, growing up in this world that they, they've never known another worldview um, and this is all they know. So I'm going to share this real quick with you as well. And it will shed some light on how the body of Messiah is using this technology. You are this is Pastor Jason Poling on a Sunday morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. And this is Pastor Jason Poling on a Sunday afternoon. All right. We can get started now. Well, his avatar anyway. He's the lead pastor of Cornerstone Church of Yuba City, California, and now also of the metaverse. All of these people from all these different tribes. Each Sunday after leading two services in person, he heads to his office, pops on his VR headset, and preaches to his other congregation. Hmm, good question. Volunteers built the digital world of Cornerstone VR Church to look just like the real one, even down to the stained glass windows. But the beauty of the metaverse, you can design it however you'd like. No worldly limitations. I like how here you can do church outside. Yep, never rain. Okay, so as you can see, the body of Messiah is starting to use this technology and it can be used for apologetics. And I believe we as the body of Messiah should be engaging, not be afraid of this. But there is some implications, ladies and gentlemen, that remember I read about the Tower of Babel at the beginning. And yeah. what you see here is kind of a depiction of what your avatar and what you need today to enter into the metaverse. I told you about those goggles, those virtual reality goggles, and the little hand uh, sets that control your movement of your body and the movement of your avatar. Uh, try to imagine someday wearing an entire suit where it will give electrical impulses and you can actually feel someone shake your hand when you're visiting a room on the metaverse. And just to also give you a perspective of how much money is involved, Today, uh, there are major companies that are buying and selling real estate in the metaverse. Remember just that church as you saw in that video, um, you can create a place and then you can charge people to come in. Like if it's a, a social meeting gathering place, like an online bar or a metaverse bar, people can go in, shake each other's hands. You'll, you'll talk to each other. And also today, the problem, one of the problems is uh, children in video games are using this technology and there has been incidences of crime where children's avatars have been um, 
molested, unfortunately. So this, this creates a whole new brave new world. And if you think driving with um, your, your texting and driving at the same time is dangerous, um, just get ready for what will be uh, entering into this world very soon within the next five years. They say this technology will be universally available and this will be the way people go to work and people will gather and, and sell and do business and commerce. It'll be all on the metaverse. And so one last uh, thing I just wanna show before I wrap it up is um, the digital afterlife is mankind's next big tower of Babel. And what you see here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is um, an individual who was in an injury, he's, he's dying and the doctors have given him minutes to live and where we're going with this technology is depicted in this video. And you see this man, um, he's about to die. His wife is there. And through the metaverse, they are uploading his conscience. And he will now exist, even though his body is dead, they want to try to upload. And this is actually a video right now on Amazon, as you can see there depicting that. Um, they are trying to... Um, uh, develop this kind of technology, if not directly, indirectly in the sense where you can touch other people, feel other people while you're on the metaverse. And if there's a way that also, you know, uh, dreams and technology that can affect, uh, you know, your worldview and things in your dreams, uh, that too will be, um, uh, uh, you know, something that they're headed towards. And so that's the next Tower of Babel. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time. And at the end, I'll stick around for questions and answers. Thanks.